today we're gonna go over all of the books we read in September. I think I just bit off more than I could chew with my September TBR. I picked way too many books and they were too long and I DNF'd a bunch. So it just wasn't that great of a reading month for me. I did get through the same amount of books I normally get through, but it's just the quality of these books weren't as great as I wanted them to be. So I think that's why September just wasn't our month. It wasn't. And that's so upsetting. But it's okay because I'm really feeling October. First up, I read Things We Hide From The Light. This is the second book in the Knock Em Out series. And I have been putting this one off for a long time just because this one was about Nash, who is the brother of the main guy in the first book. Honestly, I just, I wasn't in love with this one like I was with the first one. I gave this one a 3.5 stars. I did enjoy getting to see the same people and seeing how Naomi and Knox are and I mean the two characters in this were cute. It was just I felt like their romance was a little bit messy. They first had like insta lust but then it was also nothing really happened until like 60% and then after the 60% it was like super fast so I was just like what is going on here? The story also had a lot of dragging moments that didn't have anything to do with their romance so I think that's also why I just I didn't feel like it needed to be this long of a book. They did do a lot of teasing for Lucian and Sloane's next book but that book has already come out and all the reviews that I'm seeing are just not great reviews and I do own it already. I just I haven't been wanting to pick it up because I keep hearing people say like mediocre things about it and I don't want to sit through another 600 page book and be disappointed but I am gonna have to read it and see for myself. Hopefully I just I don't feel the same way as everyone else because Lucian and Sloan have been like my most anticipated couple from this series so we'll see but this was definitely 3.5 for me. That sucks. All right up first I have Wrong Place Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. This was one of my most anticipated mysteries for the year and rightfully so. It was interesting and entertaining. We have a mother who witnesses her son murder a man and gets sent to jail. She then gets stuck in a time loop and has to stop the murder before it happens. The whole story is told backwards which is really cool. Not only only was it an intriguing idea, but the execution, in my opinion, was so well done. One of my favorite mysteries I think I've ever read. I did give it a 4.75, which is kind of crazy for me. I just really enjoyed it and I want to read more from this author. I know she has a recent book that just came out. I think it's called Just Another Person Missing or something. I'll put a pop up, but now I'm very interested in reading this one as well because I love the writing. I did continue on with the selection series and I read The Elite and then I did read the novellas that continued on with the series as well. This series is just so fun and so light. It feels like a reward. After reading like a chunky book like this, it just feels nice to go to something like this where it's not too hard to understand what's going on. I definitely will say that I did enjoy the first book more. There's a love triangle going on. I am so Team Maxon that I don't care to hear about the other guy that she's interested in. And I'm just waiting for her to figure it out. I want her to choose him. I want it to be him. I want the rest of the books to just be her and him. This series is the one that's kind of like the Bachelor and the Hunger Games in one. In this world, everyone has like a class level. So they do have level one, which is like the really wealthy people. And then they have all the classes underneath as well. A light series. So I'm ready to just continue on with it. And it's the perfect kind of book to pick up when you just need a break from all these really big ones. Completely opposite of that. I have Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton. This is the sequel in the cat and mouse duet. I read Haunting Adeline a couple months ago. And even though it was super dark and twisty, I absolutely loved it. I was a little apprehensive going into the sequel though because I heard it was significantly darker and indeed it was just because it covers extremely dark topics and themes 1000% check trigger warnings before going into this I had to myself I will say though the first half of the book is really hard to get through however the second half is really more focused on healing and revenge and overall this series is just so memorable I'm gonna be thinking about this story and this couple forever I don't necessarily think it's a duet I would recommend to anyone unless I personally knew them and knew their specific tastes, but I did personally have a really good time with this duet. I know there's talk of a spin-off series and a book revisiting this couple, so I'm so excited for those. A crazy way to start off September, but I did end up giving this one a four. Next, I did read Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. I did watch the movie first, though. I watched the movie because I saw that it was gonna come off of Netflix pretty soon. The book and the movie were both great experiences, but they were like two completely different experiences, and I wasn't expecting that. It felt like two different stories because this is a sci-fi book I think I just need 
needed a little extra hand holding and I definitely got that in the movie. So in this book and film there's an area called Area X and it's been cut off from the rest of the world for decades and there's been different groups who go in and try and investigate what's happening here, what's going on, and why is it so different from our world. And with this story we're just following a group of a woman and they each have a different profession and they're just going in and tracking what they find and they're hoping to make it back alive. In the movie we definitely get more information about the woman. In the book they're just kind of classified as their occupation. In the movie they definitely had more to their character and they weren't just like labeled by their occupation so I did enjoy that as well. But this was a crazy ride and I definitely did enjoy it. I did give this a four stars but I do think that movie is definitely worth watching. So up next I have What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. This was one of the books I read in our reading vlog last month so I definitely go more in depth in that video. But this was another fantastic mystery thriller. I absolutely loved it. We're following a story about three little girls who go into the woods. One of them ends up being attacked. The three girls were able to identify the man and get him sent to prison. However, they've been keeping a secret and 20 years later they end up coming back together and things start unraveling. Secrets get spilled. People go missing. It just gets so juicy and so entertaining. I love the pacing, the writing. I love that I couldn't predict the ending. I did give it a 4.5 stars. And again, I do want to read more by this author. Anytime I find a mystery thriller that I actually like, I definitely want to start reading everything that those authors put out. So another great one for the month. In that same reading vlog, I did read Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. I heard a lot of good things about this one and that's why I was so excited going into this. I knew this was going to be a brother's best friend kind of romance along with football being involved in it. I knew that something tragic was going to happen as well. And I kind of thought I knew what was going to happen, but I was way off. So I absolutely loved that. This was another one of those books where it is labeled brother's best friend, but it's not a brother's best friend. She is obsessed with the brother's best friend, but then she like meets another guy and like that's our man. It just didn't feel like that dedicated brother's best friend romance that I wanted to read. So if you have really good recommendations for that, let me know because I want to read one like that. I really was just not prepared for the last 30% of the book. It was such an emotional roller coaster. This is one of those where I enjoyed the second half of the book way more than the first. And it was interesting because Megan Brandy did say that this book took her forever, like years to work on. I do think I can see that difference in writing from the first half and the second half. The second half was just amazing. Noah Riley is definitely one of my favorite book boyfriends of this year. And I do like that Megan Brandy said he was a book husband. He's not a book boyfriend. And that truly does feel correct. Like he was perfect in every single way. I did give this a four stars. So this next one, I have read a few Penelope Douglas books in the past and even though I've loved them all, I was still hesitant about starting this series because I know it's so hit or miss for people, but it was a hit for me and it is Corrupt book one in the Devil's Night series. I honestly was hooked from the very first page. I devoured this book. This was another one I read in the vlog, so I have a lot of my reactions in that video, but this book was juicy. We are following a girl named Erica. She's infatuated with this guy. She's basically known all her life, but he's never really paid any attention to her. We are following two different timelines. So one of them is when Erica was in high school and she spends this entire night with that guy Michael and his friends. And then we're following another timeline in the present where those guys are all seeking revenge for something that happened all those years ago that night. This was so good. It was definitely a darker romance, but it was so entertaining the entire time. This book, I think, really solidified my love for Penelope Douglas books. I'm just, I'm ready to accept that I'm a Penelope Douglas girl and that's okay. Even though a lot of their books are kind of labeled trashy, they're all delicious. I gave it four stars and then actually right after I finished this one, I started book two which was Hideaway and this one was just as good if not better. This one is Kai's story so we're following a new couple and Banks is the girl in the story. She is definitely my new favorite character in this series. I loved learning about her and how she was tied into the group, how she grew up. Everything about it was so interesting. After reading this book though, I'm super interested in going into book three and learning more about Damon because he's definitely the black swan of the group and I'm very interested to see what his book will entail. But these first two books in the series were fantastic. I gave this one a four star as well. Also in that reading vlog, I did read House of Hollow. What this 
this one was so unique and unlike anything I've read before. We are following three sisters who did go missing when they were really young and then they came back a month later and had no memory of where they were or what had happened to them. And ever since they've been back, they've had like strange abilities. I really did enjoy the spooky and eerie vibes. This one was really perfect to read in the fall time. I also really enjoyed learning about what crazy things happened to them. There were a lot of good plot twists that did happen in the end that I really didn't see coming and I absolutely love when I'm caught off guard and that definitely happened here. I am interested in reading more from this author. I did give this a four stars but I do think this was a perfect YA spooky airy kind of book to read especially for this time of year. Up next we have our September book club book which was Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Probably one of the most talked about romanticies right now. I'd say it was a pretty low stakes magical romance book. In this story we are following Roman and Iris. They are workplace rivals competing for the same job title. They are also connected by these magical typewriters and they start corresponding. However, he knows it's her and she does not know it's him. So it's super juicy and interesting. There's also a war happening between gods in this world, but it still stays low stakes the whole time. But we do get a little insight of the gods and the legends and things like that. This took me three weeks to finish. I really didn't think it was going to take me that long to finish. And honestly, I feel like I've been in a huge reading slump ever since I did read this. This is one of those where I just enjoyed the first half more than the second half. I did really like our main characters. I did like that kind of found family that we did get in the end, but it was just something that I wasn't completely connected with in the second half. I think it was just reminding me of multiple things and it didn't feel like original. I did like the writing. I just thought things started slowing down towards the middle and then it kind of like rushed towards mm -hmm. the end. I did like the overall story. I think I just wanted more and I'm hoping with that second book we do get a lot more. It's basically how you felt for fourth week. It is. I mean everything you're saying is how I felt. I think it just needed more time for everything to develop. It definitely felt a little underwhelming at times but I mean overall I did like the story. The romance was cute. You can't get too mad at it. I think I'm really just critiquing it more than normal because of all the hype that it has. Overall though it was super fun to read with the book club. We know a couple people in the book club had said that they don't normally read fantasy and this was like a good one for them to kind of start with so we love it for that. We've loved every book club book that we've had so nothing to be too mad at. I just don't think we loved it as much as everyone else did. I gave it a 3.75. I gave it a 3.5 but it does feel like a good 3.75. It does. I'm excited to see book two and what that's gonna entail. So those are all of the pretty great books that we've read this month and now we're going to get onto the ones that we just didn't enjoy as much. A first for me which is pretty shocking and I do feel bad saying it but I did not enjoy anxious people. I really didn't. I had to force myself to read this. This was my monthly blind pick for the month so I just felt pressured into reading it all and it's so loved so I kept feeling like I'm gonna eventually really like it but I just never really felt that way. I think I was just expecting it to be very different than what it was. I really just couldn't connect with any of the characters. It just kind of felt like they were all trying so hard to be so like quirky and like different. So I am really sad to say that I didn't like this book. I think I do own another book of his so I am interested in reading that one to see if it's just his writing that I don't like or if it was just this book. I did give this a 2.5 stars. Woo. You know what though I can't even say anything because at least you finished <laughs> yours. You guys I DNF not one not two but three books this month? That's so embarrassing and I'm so disappointed in myself. I'm not gonna beat myself up too much about it though because all of these I do want to revisit. I just could not get myself to finish them this month. I DNF'd Stephen King's Needful Things. Here's the thing though, okay? His style of writing is so unique and while I appreciate it for what it is, it was not gonna happen for me this month. I think since I've been in such a book slump the past couple months, I've been gravitating to more fast-paced, quick, straight-to-the-point books that I can just binge and move on. That's what I'm kind of needing right now. And this is the complete opposite of all of that. I was listening to the audiobook with this and I absolutely loved that. It was so atmospheric. You definitely feel immersed in this world. I felt like I was getting all the juicy details about everyone in the town. But again, I just, I wasn't in the right headspace or the right mood for this this month. So I decided to just put it down because I didn't want to risk getting into another huge slump. Book two that I DNF this month was my blind book for the month, which was Strange the Dreamer by Lanny Taylor. And I did start this in the live reading sprint for last month. And I had mentioned how the beginning took me a while to get into just because of the way that it's written. It's super descriptive, super poetic, 
and while that style of writing is really beautiful it's so flowery that I just get distracted I will say though I had gotten to a point in the story where I was more into it and it was easier to read it was easier to follow but again I just I couldn't get myself to finish it it just I'm not in the right headspace for it I unfortunately DNF'd it this month I'm going to have to finish this though because I've heard so many amazing things about it and I believe I own the sequel so this is one I'm gonna have to finish I just didn't finish it this month lastly I'm sure some of you are gonna be so disappointed in me <laughs> but I just could not do it you guys I could not do it I DNF'd Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo it was not gonna happen okay I even tried going into this with like a fresh clean slate in my mind because I have DNF'd one of her books previously but I've heard this one was a little more easier to get into it wasn't it wasn't for me I don't know what it is about her writing I think it just I don't connect with it and that's okay unlike those other two books though I don't think I got far enough into this book to really even know what the plot was supposed to be but all I knew was it was not gonna happen in September and it didn't so I DNF this one for now I'm gonna try to listen to it the next time I want to pick this up there was a lot going on straight off the bat and I just I felt like I was thrown into this and I had no idea what was happening so DNF for now but hopefully we can revisit her in the near future but yes that's all the books I DNF this month I'm hoping October is gonna be fantastic though because we have so many good books we want to read I feel very good about October for us. I mean, we are already a weekend and we've read nothing, but I think the, the last three weeks, we're really gonna kill it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these are all of our September books. Like we said, October is just going to be a better month for us. You did read two really good mystery thrillers though. That's true. I can't even complain. That's two new favorites in a genre that I haven't had a good track record with. October is gonna be a great month. We have a lot of fun videos coming out and so many good books that I know we're gonna love. The Naturals did win our literal besties book club book for October and that just feels right mm -hmm. so many of you guys have loved that book and have been recommending us to read that book so I am so ready the beautiful and lovely Nikki did gift us those books too so we are just so thankful and so excited to read so make sure to join the book club if you haven't already we will have that link in the description that's pretty much it for today's video though let us know in the comments what your favorite book of September was thank you guys so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you next time this series is just so fun and so light. It's, it feels like a reward. <laughs> have you seen that so yeah, yeah. Like, All right, up first, I have Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. Is it Gillian? Let me know. None of these are official, like, I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to sell the book. I don't want to even attempt to read it again. <laughs> was a pretty low stakes magical romance book oh there's also like wars going on <laughs> it just kind of felt like they were all trying so hard to be so like quirky and like different and we're so anxious like i don't know <laughs> <laughs>